We've talked about some basic interface stuff, we've talked a lot about math last time, I'm very sorry I had to bother you with that. Today we're going to talk about math, but in a less headache-inducing way. We're going to be talking about looping, about clamping, which also includes saturating, and then I'm going to throw in the if node as well as just a little bit of a fun bonus. So let's get started with uh, the clamping node, because I think a clamping is the most easy to understand. So if we just take our noise texture that we have here, and I'm going to uh, just tile this a little bit less so we have some more rough details in here. I'm going to run that through a clamp node, and I'm going to remove this as well. And by default the clamp node will just say minimum 0, maximum 1. And that is generally uh, what you want to do. And the reason that we have the saturate node is this is literally just what the saturate node does. So if I put in a saturate node, uh, that is just a simplified version of saying, hey, I want to clamp between 0 and 1. So you'll note if I put this into here and put that into the base color, uh, literally nothing changes because that does the exact same operation. But what does clamping do to begin with, you might be asking still. Uh, we've got a couple of clamping modes here as well, uh, but we're not going to worry about that for the time being. Clamping takes in a value whether it be a single value or an entire texture, and it kind of just says, hey, any value under the minimum, I'm going to bump that up to the minimum. Any value over the maximum, I'm going to bump that up to the maximum. So it will actually be easier to showcase if I put this into the emissive color instead. So we have uh, this value. If we just put that into the emissive color, it does the exact same thing. Now, if I say, actually, I want to multiply this by 50, something like that, right? And put that into the emissive color, uh, we'll have a very glowy little square because we're multiplying by 50. So every pixel in this texture that has a value of 1 now suddenly has a value of 50. If we run that through the clamping node, though, that's going to say no, everything above a value of 1 is just going to be 1. So the color itself is going to be a very washed out white. Because everything that is lower than uh, 1 is still getting multiplied by 50 and now probably exceeding a value of 1. Then we get to the clamping node and it's saying, hey, everything that's over a value of 1, we're going to get you right down uh, the way back to a value of 1. Uh, so we can set this to a value of 5 instead and now everything will have a maximum value of 5. But there is some loss of detail there, as you can clearly see, because it's not proportionally like pulling them down, it's just saying a cutoff. Everything above this value is now just getting immediately set to that value. And we can do the same thing uh, with the minimum. So let's just say, hey, we want the minimum value here to be 0 0.5. Now, everything that's going to be 0 0.5 or below is going to get pulled up to being a value of 0 0.5. So all of the blacks are now going to turn into the same gray color, which is actually uh, probably going to be easier to see if we like divide this by um, something. So divide this by like 1.5 or something like that. And that then creates a texture where we only have a couple of little spots of light that are above the value that we're clamping uh, from. So the clamping node itself has a little bit more freedom to it. If you just simply want to clamp between uh, 0 and 1, which is something that you very often want to do in making materials, as we get into actually creating some of the materials, we'll see this uh, some more in action, you can just use the saturate node instead. You don't need to uh, add an entire clamping node for that. So that's how clamping works. Very important to understand, uh, not all that flashy. So let's do something else fun instead. Let's do some lurping. And you might be saying, lurping, that sounds like LARPing. Do I need to get my foam swords out? And I'm saying, no, that's not what we're doing at all. I mean, if you want to get your swords out, you, you can, but that's I'm not asking you to. It's linear interpolation is what is happening. So a linear interpolation will take in an A value and a B value and a alpha value. So let's take uh, two colors. So uh, we're going to make this like two very contrasting colors, so something like red and blue. And if you put that into the loop, we have uh, an output that will be in between red and blue. So this should be like a grayish purple, kind of. Uh, it's not even all that gray, to be honest with you. And if I put the alpha 
at 0 0.1 now is going to be closer to the input color for the a pin and if i put this on like 0 0.8 it's going to be closer to the output color of the b pin now that doesn't seem all too useful together because if i wanted that color just put that color in but here we go again if we don't just use one value for the entire material but instead use a texture it's going to do this lerping on a per pixel basis so now we suddenly have our noise texture but instead of just being black and white it's now the same noise texture but moving from red to blue which can be quite cool uh, to work with i'm going to delete the uh, tiling for now and of course we can do a lot of stuff with this if they're a little less contrasting uh, that makes for quite nice uh, potential textures like this and of course we can do a lot of like interesting math and multiplication and uh, maybe like some distortion maybe adding some other textures before it gets to this loop right now we're just doing this with colors but we can do this with entire textures you have to realize so if we just loop between two texture samples this is probably not going to look that good i'm going to warn you uh but <laughs> let's take this wood texture and then uh the other one we we'll probably have like a stone texture something like that right uh sandstone you know that works we can put those in there and these are just full textures with like a lot of detail in them and if we loop between these two we now get this very weird looking in between of the two and if we take this uh, noise pattern which we've been using and uh, we can use a node called cheap contrast which just adds some contrast to uh, whatever you put into it uh, we can put in a scalar value there and usually you want to stick pretty low with the values for these so let's do 0 0.15 uh, maybe we can go a little higher here, like 0 0.5. Uh, you can see the bottom texture coming through a lot more now. So if you want to make something like uh, a texture where we have a wooden table with sand on top of it, this is kind of like a way we could start doing something like that. Of course, you would also then want to like displace the places where it does sand. And you want to have a different normal map for those places but that's just like more complex uh, setup here but the basic idea is you're looping between two different textures you'd also just be looping with the same input alpha between two different normal maps which you know let's just try to see if we can find the corresponding normal maps to these because i imagine that can't be that difficult let's also just copy the loop node uh, itself over as well and you can probably start seeing how uh, materials end up becoming very big graphs very quickly if we're doing all sorts of this stuff so uh, this is going to look real weird because it's of course not using the actual normal maps but if we have the texture for the i think this is walnut wood uh, normals so we can use that one and then for this one i assume that this is the normals for that which is a little bit weird because I was expecting this to be sand. But now it's also looping between the normal maps for both of these textures, making this very weird and fun effect. And either in the next video or a video sometime uh, soon down the line, I'm going to be talking about vertex colors, meaning that you can set up a material where you can, in your viewport, paint between these different texture sets uh, for your specific objects, which is a really, really powerful tool. It's a little bit beyond what we're doing here today though because we've had a lot of information dense videos uh before in this series like the first two parts are very information dense let's just keep it a little bit more lighthearted here lurping though is something that you're going to want to remember you're going to be doing this a lot and it's honestly maybe the most important note that you're going to be working with in materials now that we've talked about clamping and lurping i want to talk about one last thing to end of this uh, slightly more simple video and that is i want to use the if node if you're into programming uh, you'll know what an if statement is probably we can do something very similar with materials so let's uh, put this into the base color and here we put in a a value and a b value so we can say uh, for instance let's say uh, we just take our noise texture as the a value and then the b value we can just put as a scalar value and we can uh, let's say put this at 0 0.5 so now we put in some pins here saying okay what should we output if a is bigger than b i'm gonna say we output uh, this red color and if a is equal to b so anywhere that does exactly a pixel that is at 50 percent brightness we're going to be outputting uh, this uh, pink color instead and if a is less than b so any darker pixels what we're gonna do is we're gonna output uh, like this cyan color 
why not? And once we hook that up, we'll get rid of this compile error and we'll see uh, now we have this noise texture where everything that is uh, greater than a value of 0 0.5 is now just marked as being uh, this orange color. Everything that is less than that is marked as this cyan color. But if we zoom in really, really tightly, uh, what we'll be able to see is that there's a tiny bit, I don't know how well this is going to come through on YouTube, to be honest with you, uh, but there's this tiny little line of where the pixels are actually the in-between color that we uh, specified there. So that's this color. So that's the if node. Uh, generally speaking, uh, this is not a node that is used all that much. And we've also got a uh, absolute insane amount of different uh, math functions here, like uh, flooring or ceiling, which is rounding up or down. We've got uh, something for normalization, uh, all that kind of stuff. We're not going to talk about all that too much, uh, but I wanted to show you uh, the fun little thing you can do with the if node. Again, the most important thing about this video is uh, starting with the clamping and saturation nodes, and then also understanding looping. Looping is the one thing I really, really need you to remember going forward. And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas,